What's up guys, Alec here. Hope you're all having a great day. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Today I wanted to make a quick video and uh, speak to you guys about two of the main concerns when selling on Amazon as a new seller. A lot of people, um, they're nervous and, and it's just completely natural to be nervous when you're first starting out and you are sending your first um, amount of money to China. It, it, can be, it can feel sketchy and you might not be 100% confident in what you're doing and confident in the, the seller yet and the supplier in China yet because you don't have a relationship with them at the moment. You just start out and you, you don't, you don't want to get scammed and uh, you don't want them to run with your money once you send it. So, I mean, the, it can be a little, um, a little uh, troublesome when you're first starting out. You're not really 100% sure what's going to happen. So, I want to uh, speak about the uh, two ways that you can completely and risk-free start Amazon FBA and you could pretty much um, abolish all the um, issues that could potentially happen or that can get you kind of uh, at a loss with your money and your investment. So what you're going to want to do when you are you are uh, first sending your initial batch of um, starting your initial order and sending your first batch of money to China to your supplier is you're going to want to get it your, once you get all the um, the invoices from all the suppliers and I have a video on my channel check that out if you haven't when you do that you're going to want to review over it make sure all the costs are, are um, as you expected everything is um, how it should be and then uh, on there ask them for your for their PayPal email address so what you guys are going to be doing and I have PayPal pulled up here is you're going to be using PayPal to send your uh, your initial uh, batch and amount of money. So by you by doing this, you guys can guarantee and ensure that you have a safe and secure uh, transaction. So if there's any issues, um, any issues at all, you are completely backed by PayPal. And PayPal, I have to say, has the most amazing um, uh, backing and uh, transactions. So if there's any issues, they're gonna be they're gonna stand behind you, and they they tend to um, help the the buyer more than over the seller. So if you have any issues, um, you just create a um, uh, a report and you send you send in a a report that you know your inventory w had issues, it was defective, it was not as you expected, or you know you're you're in the worst case scenario, and this usually does not happen. The supplier just takes your money and you don't hear from them again. But that really doesn't usually happen. But if you use something like this, like PayPal, to conduct the transfer of money, you guys can be 100% sure that they're going to stand behind you um, if there are any issues. So I fully recommend using PayPal. All you have to do is create an account. You can create a personal account or a business account just on PayPal.com. And you just open it up. It's pretty simple to do. And... All you need is the um, supplier's email address, and you tell them, I'm going to send 30% through PayPal. The 70%, you can do a wire transfer if um, you cut, you're kind of comfortable. The, uh, that's what I recommend, 30% with um, PayPal and then 70% with a wire transfer. I just want to quickly, um, from my experience, tell a quick story uh, about what happened to me. I sent an order. Um, that I purchased in China and I did 30% with PayPal and there were the supplier was not good at all and I realized that after a month and I was kind of stuck in a situation and after all that all I did was pay 30% with PayPal I didn't put the whole three three grand up so 30% was with PayPal and I always had that recourse if if they did not refund me my 30% so I could have uh, opened up a dispute with PayPal no issues and got my money back. So I was confident and comfortable doing that. And you guys will too if you do it this way as well. So that's what I recommend. And um, you can send the whole amount this way. PayPal charges a 4% uh, transfer fee. It's really not a lot um, be, being what how, how you're uh, securing yourself and um, having confidence sending the money if there's any issues. So I would definitely do it this way if I were, if I were, uh, if I were you and speaking to a new seller, do it this way and you're going to be 100% um, more confident in what you're doing and sending your money to China. And if there are any issues, you have someone backing you. 
Now, sometimes these suppliers do not want to use PayPal. They think it's a little, uh, you know, they think it's a little sketchy that um, you might just uh, dispute the transaction once you get the goods or anything like that. So they um, sometimes they might want to use something called Alibaba Trade Insurance. I used it a few times and it, there was no issues with it. So basically you, you, you go through PayPal and it builds up the, uh, the supplier's uh, credibility and their uh, uh, ratings on there. So sometimes I like doing that. So you just basically do that and once you get the goods, you just release the funds and it goes uh, that way. And this is a safe, secure way to do it just as well. So if um, they present this option to you to use uh, Alibaba Trade Insurance, go ahead. Um, you're gonna have not, you're not gonna have any issues with that. You just connect your bank account and go through with it, and within a day or two, they receive the uh, the transfer of the money. So Alibaba or PayPal, the two uh, best ways I recommend to um, transfer your money without any recourse, and it's safe, secure, and if there's any issues, you have recourse, like I said, and you could. Uh, you have a, you have something to stand behind you, and you can get your money back if there's any issues. So usually there aren't, but um, if you do it this way, you're gonna it's gonna be 100% risk free. That um, and take take the worry off you as a new seller. Um, I was in that same position when I started a few years ago, and it's natural. Um, you're gonna be a little worried and nervous to, when you're starting, but if you do it this way, you'll have no issues. So I just want to talk about the other worry when it comes to uh, starting out on Amazon. You you want to invest two three thousand dollars in a uh, in a test order, and it could be six hundred five hundred uh, units, and you get them to Amazon. You do everything right. You check your you check the product. You make sure it's selling well. The product tracker and everything I talk about on this channel. Check out the other videos where I explain in detail how to ensure your product is going to sell, but after all said and done and you checked everything and you did all your due diligence, sometimes things happen and your product will not sell um, as good as you expected. It might sell a little bit, but it might not do as, as you intended. And with entrepreneurship and anything, uh, any business you start, nothing's 100% guaranteed. You might have a product that does not uh, live up to your standards or or has, is not selling the way you expect. So what do you do in that case? With By following this method that I'm going to show you right now, you're going to be sure that you're going to get all your money back because I'll show you right here with, uh, this is the Amazon um, uh, profit calculator. I have, I have another video on my channel that I go through this whole thing and um, explain to you how to set it up and how to get all your expenses and your Amazon FBA fees and then come out with your break-even price and your estimated sales per month and everything that is important when selling on Amazon. So check out that video. But I had a, a situation where uh, I got everything in and I did everything right. It should have been selling and it was selling, but it was trickling in. It really didn't it really didn't meet my expectations. So what did I do? I didn't want to be stuck with 600 units uh, like you see here. And by setting this up, I saw my break even price was $8.37. So all my competitors were were between like fifteen and like nineteen dollars for this product. So what did I do? I wanted to get out of this product and I wanted my money back without any issues. So I knew my break even price was eight dollars and thirty seven cents. So I put my price at I would say nine ninety nine to ten ninety nine, and the sales started to pick up, to pick up, to pick up, and eventually within a month, a month and a half, I had no inventory left. So I basically got back all the money I put up front and still even made a little money on top of that. It wasn't that much, but 800, a thousand bucks on top of that. But after all was said and done, I got all my money back. So this is a completely risk-free way, um, to, to go about Amazon. You're, you're really not, you're really not, you don't have a ton of risk. If your product doesn't sell, all you do is just lower the price and you're going to get the sales because the customers obviously want the, the lowest price. And, um, I don't recommend lowering the price unless you have to, uh, to kind of liquidate and get rid of inventory. But if you have to do it, you have to do what you have to do to just get your profits back that you, your investment that you put forward. And then you, you'll take that and spin that off into a new product. So that's what I did. I got back all my money. I made a little money off of it and I moved on just simple business. And, uh, not everything is always going to hundred percent work out in your favor, 
Uh, you just got to keep uh, pushing through it. And one product might be terrible. The next one might be a $20,000 per month product. But that is a way to uh, ensure that your products, uh, that your product, if you have X amount of units for a test order, that you can get rid of them regardless of whether it hits your expectations or not. And most of the time it will, but if it doesn't, this is what you do. Just lower your price. You'll get rid of your um, units and your inventory. You'll get your investment back, and there you go. You can you can start a new product with that. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to kind of just like debunk a few things that people, and especially I had when starting out, I was confused at a few of these things, and I was nervous. And it's completely natural. Don't be um, don't feel like it's only you because everyone goes through it, and People are worried when sending in uh, money to China. It's it's not something that that you do every day. So you're going to be a little skeptical and nervous at, at first. But if you follow what I just showed you in this video, and they're not going to be, and you're not going to have any recourse with your products if there's any defects or it's not how you expected it, or if your supplier runs on you, you have full recourse and you uh, are backed by these uh, Alibaba or PayPal. And if your um, products really don't sell well. Just lower the price, do what I said. So I just wanted to make this vi this video and show you the best way to sell on Amazon risk-free. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'm constantly releasing new videos every day about Amazon FBA, uh, private label, uh, selling on Amazon, e-commerce, and uh, living the laptop lifestyle. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.